Hello everyone, how's it going? Um, just back to do a, an update of my uh, David Bowie collection. I'm uh, going to kick off with this lad here. This is the uh, David Bowie conversation piece that was released um, November 2019, just uh, before Christmas. actually got this as a Christmas present. Um, it's a, a five disc set, um, which uh, generally, primarily um, concentrates on around his 68-69 period, uh, just prior to uh, his Space Oddity album. Um, it has five discs. Uh, it includes a 120-page um, booklet, a um, good book. Um, it also has uh, the BBC Radio Session studio recordings. Um, it has material that he'd done with uh, John Hutchison and Hermione Fardinger, the Feather Sessions, of course. And um, it also has the uh, 50th anniversary of the Space Oddity album and uh, the original mix of the uh, Space Oddity album. So um, it sounds good. It's a nice piece to have. Um, Space Oddity time there. There we go. As I said, it has five discs. The first disc generally um, concentrates generally on the, the material that was released earlier in that year, the um, stuff that he done with Hutchison, and John Hutchison, and the Clairville, uh, the, the Clairville Grove demos, and also the uh, the spine through a keyhole that were released on seven inch box sets, or, uh, back box sets, I should say, earlier in the year. Some nice pictures, nice notes, well put together. These pictures also um, appear in um, the actual um, box set with uh, the, the Mercury demos that was released on vinyl with John Hutchison. Some of them do, I should say, not them all, of course. That's a lovely picture there with Hermione Farden, yeah. And uh, it does keep Christmas, I think, yeah. There we go. Some lovely pictures. Well put together, this. Because we got this instead of the um, box set that we thought we were going to get the follow-up to um, the, um, the, the Alien box set, which they were releasing, of course, uh, from five years onwards um, material. They were releasing chronologically from um, Space Oddity right up to his Never Let Me Down album. So we didn't get one this year because, uh, generally, I think because of um, legal reasons. I know there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of trouble going on with material so forth and also um, the uh, tin machine material there was problems with as well so I think Hunt Sales was um, and Tony Sales who were members of the tin machine of course were saying that um, they were only going to get paid as uh, session musicians instead of actual uh, members of the band tin machine so I know that put a, put a hole in a lot, of, um, a lot of work there this is very well put together Again, as I said before, not a, not a period of his life that I kind of, or his uh, work that I've kind of, was always, I was never very fond of. I always found it a bit too uh, cheesy, this kind of work. Yeah, his Tony, Anthony Newley, I should say, Faye is, I always find his earlier stuff very kind of comical. I just, for me, and even Space Oddity was never an album that I kind of um, grew on as such. I do like it and I do appreciate the album, but... Um, this was released actually probably at the right time, of course, with the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, so um, it was probably a good idea to release this. But it's very well put together. As I said, there's five discs on it. Um, the first disc is um, generally the work of, um, that was actually released on the 7-inch box sets. Um, you got them all together in one uh, CD, the um, Spine Through the Keyhole and the Clairville demos. And then the second one is uh, the uh, vinyl that was released um, with John Hutchison, the Mercury demos. Then the third one is uh, conversation pieces, which is um, primarily material, BBC sessions, so for a bunch of stuff that um, you know you can't get on various stuff, so uh, or on various stuff by Bowie anyway. And then you've got the um, the David Bowie uh, Space Oddity album as well, the original one, and then you have the um, 50th anniversary, the Tony Visconti mix, which does sound good to be honest with you. Yeah, the release in Space Oddity on a picture disc, I believe, later in the year. It was in June which will have the uh, original uh, RCA cover, not the actual uh, Philips cover, the RCA cover. So um, it looks good in pictures, so um, look forward to that one. That's one I probably will get. But that's conversation pieces. Now, this here, as I was saying, this is the 7 inches. This is the uh, John Hutchison um, Clairville Grove demos, which has... Um, all the seven inches they sound good and they're nice to um nice to have in this uh, in this they come with a 
post postcards and things like that notes so forth and um, the actual um, seven inch singles themselves they're very kind of basic they're just in original kind of uh, brown sleeves but they look good they're very well put together they all kind of have the same idea there I suppose it's a nice little piece and this one here is flying through the keyhole it's flying through a keyhole I should say it's that lad there same idea again again this would be the force disc on the um, on the conversation piece the same idea again just all in um, brown little um, brown little sleeves there so that's that lad there and this one here this one is still sealed this comes with a poster you've probably seen it anyway online there's uh, plenty of um, uploads of people showing this particular this particular piece 50th anniversary comes with a post and it has the uh, Space Oddity single, the original mono with the uh, Wild Eye Biden Free Cloud and Space Oddity with the Wild Eye Biden Free Cloud 2019 mix. And there you have it. Space Oddity, they really cashed in on that one this time, of course. They, they, they released this material just at the right time. Now, this one here, the vinyl, this is diamond dogs this is uh, the 45th anniversary on a red vinyl so same idea as aladdin sane which i think was released on a silver vinyl and ziggy was released on a uh, was it yellow vinyl i forget uh, well, hunky dory was released on a gold vinyl i remember when they were released there as well i forget the colors of them to be honest with you i have them anyway so so i picked that one up Yes, should have shown this too. This is Space Oddity as well. This is um, the 50th anniversary, which has the Wild Eye Boy from Freak, or the conversation piece on it. Again, as I said, I'm not overly mad on the Space Oddity album. For me, it kind of, Bowie, I really got into Bowie from Around the Man of Soul, the War, when he started walking with the spiders. Because um, I always kind of um, look at this album as you've got these kind of... Um, acoustic folk songs and then you've got these kind of songs with um, a, 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 a kind of a, a backing band and then you've got this one mega song which totally stands out on the album the space oddity song but um yeah it's 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 an okay album but it's again it's not one of my favorite albums from when he started working with ronson and that that's when i really got into him when he started working with uh, mick wooden and see and so forth Although I do like John Hutchison, the work he done with John Hutchison, of course, who we met through the uh, the buzz prior to his uh, Feathers Band. Yeah. There you go. And Feathers, of course, had a lot of kind of Lindsay Kemp influence so far. And it used to do a lot of miming and stuff then as well. So it's it's Feathers really was his kind of um, opening up to his experimental kind of state. So Now, this lad here, Glastonbury 2000, of course, the mega album itself. Beautiful vinyl, fold out album, trifold album. Some great songs on this. The good thing about this album is he kind of, uh, this was of course 2000, but um, he kind of, it was the first time in around 10 years that he started to do his hits. Like you've got China Girl, you've got Absolute Beginners, you've got um, All the Young Dudes, you've Let's Dance Heroes, Starman, Hello Space Boy. I know he was doing a lot of stuff um, on his outside tour, but he was kind of re kind of creating a lot of uh, tracks, like songs, obscure songs like Andy Warhol and DJ so far, Boys Keep Swinging. But um, this one, he was kind of really back to basics and he, he re-recruited Earl Slick. He was working with old band members and so forth. Again, he kind of moved away from Reeves, Gabra Reeves Cabrales. But the only thing, the only downfall I have about this album is I always feel it's kind of rushed. It, it kind of feels that it's um, it sounds good and it's it's, it's a, a absolute uh, cracker of a performance but the songs I feel sometimes he's a little out of key and the the, the, the song the songs themselves I'm gonna pick a song like station to station I feel it's a little bit clumsy if you listen to it it's kind of because he hadn't performed them in so many years and um I thought he did rehearse them as you can see the notes there if you read the notes so far he did put a lot of work into uh, this performance and it absolutely shows but um yeah, it's kind of, this I feel is always his recreation as such because he really got back to being, moving away so much from his experimental stage, that kind of obscure experimental stage into that kind of basic 
you know, these are my songs, you've heard these before, I'm doing them again, kind of thing. Because he said in 1990 he would never perform these songs again. But as Bowie says, he likes to lie to everyone, so. Well, he did like to lie to everyone, so there you are, in true Bowie style, but a great album. This one here, Storytellers, I love this album. This was released uh, just after his Hours album release. Well, it actually wasn't. It was released on CD after his hours uh, released. This was released on vinyl there uh, last year. This is the full performance. You could get this actually on vinyl on a um, an unofficial release, but uh, it didn't have all the songs on it. This has all the songs that he performed at that particular show, and it sounds good. And again, it was the first time that he started doing his old stuff again, so it was it was great. He'd done songs like Driving Saturday, Ward on a Wing, which are very much fan favourites. I'd even done songs like I Can't Help Thinking About Me. Which is going way, way back. So that's Storytellers. Great album, great stories on that, and great form in this particular album. Beautiful piece. This here, again, it's getting back to his early gear. This is kind of similar to the conversation pieces. This is a, a nice piece. It's 85 or 500 limited edition. It's on a, a Coke bottle green vinyl. It has uh, demos and stuff like that, early stuff, which. Um, you can kind of, which were have been around, but um, uh, it's nice to have. My, I, I don't mind listening to this stuff now, to be honest with you. Again, it's not my favourite, but um, I'd like the cover of this. It's from around, that's actually from around the time of Feathers. It was a uh, Lindsay Kemp influence. So, um, yeah, as I said, Feathers stuff, again, was kind of um, his more experimental kind of, it was the first time he kind of got into his obscure experimental kind of uh, stuff. Now, because he was with bands beforehand, like the Lower Tour, which were mod, and you had the King Bees and the Conrads. They were more kind of, and the Manish Boys, they were very much um, kind of just doing covers and stuff. Now, David Bowie. This is a Bird of the Spider, 14 or 500. It's on a, um, a white bone splatter vinyl, beautiful album. The thing I like about this album is, it has the uh, rehearsals from April 87, but it's not actually the press conference interviews that he's done. It's actually the songs he was performing. So you have songs like Blue Jean, Time Will Crawl, Shining Star, which he rehearsed um, and done at a particular um, rehearsal shows. But it never actually made it onto his Glass by the Tour. So um, it's nice to hear these. I did have them on various other um, um, unofficial releases, but um, nice to have all in one piece, uh, all in one place. Uh, it has the uh, Sydney uh, Club uh, Press Conference and it has uh, the London Press Conference, New York Press Conference as well. So um, it's nice. It's on a uh, white bone splatter vinyl too and it's 14 or 500. This here I liked. I like this when I see it. As I said before, I don't buy unofficial releases or semi-unofficial releases unless I like them and I don't have them already under a different name on an album which is going on absolutely constantly at the moment especially with the sound and vision material it's ridiculous but this i liked now i do have all these songs on all this stuff as well but um it kind of has that changes bowie look to it if you look at their changes live bowie and it kind of has the same idea as changes one bowie and changes two bowie but it's all live material so for five years from his um his 78 tour life on mars i think it's from the serious moonlight tour Time from Glass by the Rebel Rebel from Sound of Vision Tour, and then the last two, Joe the Lion, we prick you from his outside tour. But they're on uh, other various kind of semi official uh, live albums, they can be got. But that's nice, I really like that. Well put together. This year, David Bowie Manhattan Man. This I liked as well when it popped up there last year. Um, limited edition uh, yellow red splatter vinyl, 238 of 500. This sounds perfect. This app, the sound is immaculate on this, really. Well, very well uh, put together, this one. It has uh, the Tribeca Film Festival show from New York, uh, May of 2002. And it also has uh, the um, the Today Show, the Rockefeller Plaza, New York, when he done the uh, Rock and Roll Suicide sound check, which he hadn't done for many, many years, but it was more of a piss take. But it's great to have it on vinyl there. And also Space Oddity that he performed July 5th, 2002. But it's nice, there's some rare stuff on this. This is very, very well put together, this album. This here, one of my favourite record companies. This is the um, the Borough Supply. This one I didn't have by Borough Supply. This is Jesus on Dateline, Light Bahamas 2003, from his reality show, of course. Reality tour, I should say. 
good songs on this. It's from uh, yep, Nasser, uh, uh, December 20, 2003. Uh, Nasser Bahamas. That was a, um, a broadcast, radio broadcast show. Sounds absolutely perfect. Great album, that. Listen to that a few times. Very, very well put together. Now, this one here, which was released not too long ago. This is David Bowie, Best of Montreal 87. From the live glass by the show, of course, just on picture disc. It's actually still sealed, so I can't actually open it up there. I'm going to keep this one sealed. Good songs, kind of the best of. But it really kind of has the uh, the forced kind of disc of the show. So, um, a nice album, that. So that's that one. Picture disc. This one here. Isola Tutor. David Bowie. This sounds good too. It's a, a Tokyo. It's from Tokyo. Uh, FM broadcast show. Sounds absolutely brilliant. Looks good too. This again I picked up because um, I liked the artwork and then. Um, I like the particular show. I think I have this on another album under a different name. As I was saying, I don't normally do that, but I liked this. This is a semi-official release, but um, I liked the artwork. I just liked the way it was well put together, so sounds great too. This is the same idea, Dallas 78. Again, I liked this. This has also been released on CD as well, as was the, uh, the David Bowie, the uh, Tokyo show. It's from the uh, same tour, Isla 2 tour. Great pictures in that, in it. And it sounds brilliant. Again, just be careful when you're buying these because um, they've released so much other stuff too, which is just doubling up, trebling up on albums, which is totally unnecessary because a lot of the stuff that's unofficial is actually worthless. It's pointless really getting them as well because they will eventually be released on official release. Lots of record companies are just jumping on the bandwagon and just taking the piss a bit, releasing stuff, you know, and some stuff sounds absolutely awful. Yeah, but these, um, I pick stuff up that I like, particular stuff. Is the semi official, they're okay, but there's a lot of unofficial stuff too that you need to be very careful of. Again, this is the same idea. This is from his 83 tour, his series from the tour Montreal. This is volume two, actually. I have volume one of this as well. Again, I liked the artwork and I liked um, the way it was well put together. And again, it sounds great. But if this popped up again under a different name, I, I certainly wouldn't buy it. It's just I wanted to have this particular show. Now, this here, Tin Machine. This is a 10-inch on a white vinyl. This is from uh, Tokyo 92. It's that one there. And get the same on Tin Machine. This was released there earlier on too. This is Tin Machine Japan 92. This I got on CD, it was released about two years ago. They released it on vinyl now and it sounds absolutely fantastic. Brilliant show. This is much better than the old Vey Baby. That was the official release that was released in the uh, mid-90s. Or should I say the early 90s. But it has some great songs on it. Uh, Goodbye Mr. Red, if there is something that sound great. Crack City, I can't read. You can't talk. Uh, Bus Stop, You Belong in Rock and Roll. The only songs I actually don't really like are the ones that Hunt Sales actually sings, which is a bit kind of uh, a bit bad. <laughs> like songs like Sorry and State Side, which I'd never mad on, which is from his Tim Machine 2 album. And Heavens in Here, I think he drags out too long. It's too long. It goes on too long, I think. It's a bit dragged out. But apart from that, it's a great album. And Bowie's in great form on this and sounds brilliant. And the, the actual sound of the album itself, of course, it's a... Um, it's a broadcast, it's a radio broadcast, it sounds brilliant. Now this here is a bootleg that was released in the 80s. Slaughter in the Air, which is a 78 tour, again his Isola 2 tour. Um, this is um, a vinyl that I've been after for a long time. Now, the reason why I like this, I'm kind of a bit nostalgic about this, is because... Um, I remember this when I was a kid, it used to be floating around and I had it on a blank cassette. You could buy bootlegs on blank cassettes, I remember, on O'Connell Bridge and I had a rake in them by Bowie. And to get this like would be uh, nigh on impossible. So um, I was glad when I picked this up actually, when I seen it pop up there on eBay, I said, oh, I'll go for this. It wasn't too expensive, so I was delighted to pick up. It's not official, but it's the bootleg that was around in the... Um, it's a bit like the uh, the 72... Um, 
or what you call it show as well which I have as well. And it, 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 well, I, I, I can't really say that uh, official bootleg because it, there's no bootleg that's official, but it's one that was floating around and very hard to get. So I was, I was delighted to pick this up. Of course, I have it on. Um, I have this particular show on a, uh, a but it's probably a, a semi semi official release. But um, this is nice here, and it has the cover that was around then as well. And I used to have it set on blank cassette that I bought for two or three pounds at the time. And I think I played it to death, but the sound quality on this is absolutely brutal, to be honest with you. But then again, going back to the cassettes and back to the 80s. There you go. Now CDs. This is under the covers. This is the songs that Bowie didn't write. Songs like I Can't Explain, White Light, White Heat, because it was Lou Reed, I Can't Explain, was the Who. Um, Maggie's Farm, Dylan, of course. Um, Alabama Song, Doors. Um, you know, stuff like Comfortably Numb, the uh, version you've done with uh, David Gilmore, which sounds absolutely fantastic. So um, that's a nice little piece to have as well. And this one here is absolutely brilliant. This is Outside in Budapest. Sounds brilliant. This is a great performance. Great songs on this. And the set list actually reminds me of, I went to see him on his early tour when he played the Olympia in Dublin around, I don't know if it was August 5th or August 6th of uh, 97. And the set list is primarily the same. Some great songs. We did a uh, quick sound. Queen Bitch, Waiting for the Man, Gene Genie, I'm Afraid of Americans, Battle for Britain, Man Who Sold the World, Fashion, Seven Years to Bed, Stay, which, um, I don't know if it's that mix, but it it's um, it's the kind of the same um, kind of mix that he done for the, um, the um, Is It Any Wonder, which I don't have yet, which I'm going to pick up. Uh, which has the six songs from around the Erdling period too. Man Who Sold the World as well, or Baby Universe, and you're probably aware of that anyway. But uh, there's only 6,000 copies of that, but I'm going to pick that up pretty soon as well. But this is a brilliant CD, and it sounds absolutely fantastic. I don't think it's been released on vinyl yet, but I'm going to look out for this one. Yeah. That's that one. And this one here, of course, Glastonbury 2000 CD with the DVD, of course. Beautiful piece. Gig. The DVD looks great too. There you go. Now, some singles. 40th anniversary. This here, David Bowie. This is the uh, Breaking Glass EP that was released um, last year, earlier in the year. This has Breaking Glass, Arcade, Hang On To Yourself and Ziggy Stardust. All from, or the, I think they're all from the stage album, of course. All from his 78 tour. Looks good. This here, the single to DJ. Picture from a shot from his DJ uh, video. And the B-side is uh, Boys Keep Swinging. From, is that from the Kenny Everett show? It is, yeah. The mix from the Kenny Everett show. Boys Keep Swinging. And the flip to that is I Pray Olay which was a bonus track on his Royco Disc Lodger album. Of course, Boys Keep Swinging is from the Lodger album, of course, but I Pray Olay never appeared on the Lodger album, but it did appear on his uh, re-release 91 of Lodger. It was a 92 Royco Disc, EMI Royco Disc. I'm glad that got a, um, got a show on because I Pray Olay was an absolutely brilliant song. This here, of course, is latest Alabama song. Has Joe the Lion. And Alabama song live versions on it also. Next single we should have um, will be Ashes to Ashes, which will be later in the year. I think Ashes to Ashes was pretty late, 1980. Be interesting to see the B side of that. I wonder will it be move on. I have a funny feeling they might release Crystal Japan or something like that as B sides. But this here is a single I never had, but a suburbia. And the B side is dead again. So it's probably the two best songs on that particular album. This is the one that features Lenny Kravis, of course. So I was glad I picked this up. Didn't actually have this on 7 inch, so it's nice to have that. And this here is the Share Show EP. The songs that he done with Share on uh, the show back in uh, the uh, mid 70s. It has the Young America's Medley and uh, the Fame and Can You Hear Me um, live versions that he done on that particular show as well. It's nice. And this here, Record Store Day of 2019. Just a gigolo, 7 inch. That's that lad there. 
and as was released then also was um, the wall of David Bowie record store day 2019 yep I have this of course the uh, the album that was released in the 80s the wall of David Bowie um, it's a different cover of course but um, this is still sealed so yep and also released for record store day was pinups picture disc as I said there, it'd be interesting to see now the Space Oddity picture disc, because there's never been a Space Oddity picture disc, so it'd be great to have that. Yeah, here we go, and some records to show now. So this year we'd have Record Store Day, which is delayed, of course, because of the, uh, the times we're in. But um, we'll have um, changes now, Bowie, and we'll have um, Philly Sessions, I think it is, 74 Sessions. These are various albums that I do have, of course, that I picked up in various charity shops, so forth, and uh, car boot sales and things, or flea markets, as they call them in the States. This is the 84, is it 84? Yeah, uh, the Reem version of his first album. Again, as I said, not an album I'm particularly over keen on. But um, I picked this up. I have the original pressing to this, actually, that was released in the 60s. I have that put away. This is Let's Dance. Now the reason why I picked this up is to, it's very flimsy. I picked this up in a charity shop for three euros. But it's so flimsy. It's a uh, English version to EMI America English album, an English pressing. The one I have is Irish and it's much thicker, it's much more sturdy. So I was wondering why it's so flimsy. And yeah, so I had to pick it up, primarily for, because of that reason. This here is Stage. This is on the yellow vinyl, which I'd never actually had. I have about three or four different kind of formats of this album original and re-releases so far they have the uh, the orange um, fonts and also the uh, pepper fonts um, vinyls which I can't remember the, where they're from or I know I have, I have quite a, a, a quite a good few copies of stage but this one I didn't have on yellow so I was glad to pick this up again I picked that up in the charity shop I think it's about 10 euros David Live original pressing British pressing didn't have a British pressing. I think it's a Holland pressing I have. And a, um, I have another German. I forget now. I know I have pressings. I didn't have an English pressing of this. So I have this. This here is David Bowie, Man Who Sold the Wolf. This is on the Dinoflex, which again, getting back to the flimsy thing, it's very, very kind of flimsy. But they sound great because I was looking online and anyone that ever talks about it, well, I have quite a few Dinoflex, but I didn't have the Man Who Sold the Wolf. So, um, Glad I picked this up. I gave it a spin. It skips actually on Superman, but um, uh, it sounds it sounds good. The sound quality is absolutely excellent for such. You think it's not going to sound great, but it does. So glad I picked that up. Again, there were only a couple of quid in, in charity shops. I can't remember how much I paid for it. This here is an original pressing of Diamond Dogs, which is in immaculate condition. British pressing. I have another one of these, but um, I think it skips somewhere. I'm not too sure where, so I picked this up as well. I think this was about 10 euros as well. But it sounds great. Absolutely fantastic. This is an original record. This is an original Ziggy Stardust as well, which again I do have, but um, I picked it up as well. An English pressing. Again, I think I paid only about five, four or five euros for this. Original Hunky Dory. doesn't skip at all gave it a good play again four or five euros and this is pinups this is an international green font which i didn't have i have it on orange and i have it on pepper font and i have them um, all the re-releases but i didn't actually have it on that so i was glad i picked this up as well again i pick kind of more official things up because i i prefer to pick those up rather than than um stuff like uh, bootlegs or re-releases and things that um that just they keep re-releasing over and over again because I'm just kind of pissed off at that to be honest with you. Yeah. So that's that. So I think that's everything. Then. Yep, that's all I can show for now. So thanks for watching, everyone, and I shall do another update soon. And um, for now, take care of yourselves and stay safe. So again, once again, thanks for.